time we've actually recorded in a while. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, life happens and all that shit. So, mm. but here we are. We're back. Yeah. We're back again. With the review that should have happened last week until, yes. you know, yes. life happened. Life, <laughs> life sucks sometimes. Um, but anyway, do you want to introduce our lovely podcast? Oh, so quickly. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That is Lily Kay. Meow. Wow. Meow. <laughs> well done. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, that one actually came out quite well. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, I can't. No. <laughs> no. Oh, well. Wow. It's my own wow. Okay. Um, that was over Wilson, if you guys don't know. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> but it's like it's signature thing with him. Uh, before we get into the review, what did you watch last week? What did I watch last week? I kind of... I got most of the way through Stranger Things again. Technically, I still have one episode left of season three, okay. but I haven't rewatched it because I kind of accidentally watched half of it with my mother. Um, and it was it, like... A couple. She was. She got ahead of me in a rewatch, and then I kind of was in the room while she was watching the latter half of an episode. Mm. Um, and uh, so I just haven't because I was like, well, it's been like a day since I last watched this whole half of the episode, so I yeah. haven't gone back to. You know, you get the idea. Yeah. Um, so I just haven't gone back to it yet. But um, uh, I don't. I mean, other than this, I don't know if I watched anything else. Did I? I don't know. Did you? No, not really, because like all the stuff I need to catch up on, I kind of don't want to at the moment. Because the you know the mood, <laughs> not entirely. I mean, I watched episode four of Kenobi, but I haven't watched episode five. Mm. Let me see. Um, last one is coming in tomorrow. Mm. Well, we're recording on Tuesday, so you know what. Yeah. Um. Uh. Well, yeah, I watched episode four because like I still have three episodes of Barry to watch, but like. Apparently they're all very intense, so I just haven't been in the mood to watch them. Plus, I haven't seen any of the boys yet. I, that's like, and the biggest episode of the boys is coming this. I Friday, know. And I'm like... I saw that. I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, okay. I did find it very funny that they were like, you and like, uh, here are all the content warnings. Nobody should watch this. Nobody should watch this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> And Jensen was literally like, you know, what was the most regrettable thing you did? It was in this show. It, it <laughs> happened in this show. And I'm like, it's the hero orgasm. It's, it's coming. <laughs> That's an interesting choice of words there, Lily. That's what it's called. No, it's coming. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I had to spell that out for I'm you. Sorry. I'm slow today. <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. I don't even quite understand what the hero orgasm is, and I don't think I want to know. You don't know what it is? Not really. Oh my god, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share. So basically... Wait, no, I don't... Do you think I should know, or do you think I should just go in totally blind and be... and feel like my, my, my eyeballs are melting out of my head? That's a good question. Because I, like... Okay, let's put it this way. Are there any, like, I mean, other than what I feel like is probably quite obvious, because I did read the little content warning thing on the front of, um, yes. uh, you know, the trailer. So yes. I was like, okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. Is there anything else, like, that I need to know in order to just prepare myself? Like, I don't need details, just sort of, like, you know, content wise. It's going to be fogged up. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> it's gonna yeah, this, be... is, this is the only thing I've heard. <laughs> it's going to be the craziest shit that you can ever witness if they are really going for it. Because I have a feeling that they are just baiting us at this point. Like, you know. <laughs> With the boys? I don't think, though. I know, I know. But it would be like a surprise if... Because in the comics, it's like very intense. Like, <laughs> I was... Even I was like... Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> so, if they are really going for it, yeah, it's, your your eyeballs are gonna just. Oh, it's kind of like my worst nightmare. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, in terms of like show content, I'm like, oh god, no. I mean, I haven't even watched Bridgerton for fuck's sake. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
yeah like like double dead that's happening i mean it? like triple like mm. no maybe i yeah it's... anyway i'll anyway. get to it and yeah. just sort of maybe just cover it's my glorious, eyes like though. the puritanical um <laughs> yeah it's it's glorious so far i will have to say that like they pissed me I, off I, with, yeah. on, on episode four and then they fixed that on episode five so i was like okay yeah, we are still friends so yeah but it's glorious yeah I, i'll get to it you know funnily enough i haven't been in the mood for that for like the past couple of weeks not really been where my headspace is at been at mm. you get me i do i do it's fine but did i watch anything else i don't know did you i don't think so i kind of was i was watching a bit of the umbrella academy they just the kind of get myself back in the mood for tomorrow and next week uh review i'm so excited <laughs> i know you are and i i i did watch i finally watched all of it like you know right on time yes right on time i only have to wait one day basically <laughs> for season three i've been waiting two years i know i'm like, sorry <laughs> rolling in you know that's what fear does to you <laughs> I was mortified from this show because both times I started watching it, I ended up in the emergency room. So I was like, I'm not watching this. It has a curse on it. <laughs> and, and then I went, you... no. <laughs> and then you came in and you were like, really? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't go to the hospital, by the way. So I'm still alive, as you can tell. And I watched um... it all. I, I watched it all. And... It really is, because we've talked a lot about some of the bit, moments in it that I was... Yeah. So, you know, just that I love. But I forgot to mention one of my favorite jokes in the entire thing, which is in season two. Um, a little bit of a spoiler, I guess, thing for season two of the Umbrella Academy, but you know, it's been out for two years. Yeah. So but when one of the Swedes dies and they have the funeral and Hello by Adele plays in the background, but it's in Swedish. It's Swedish. <laughs> it's... So good. So good. <laughs> It was perfect. At first, I wasn't sure if it's that song, and then suddenly I was like, "It is." It's it's what I just keep referring to as the Swedish hello. Yeah, <laughs> it just cracks me up every time. Like literally, if you turn if you turn on the subtitles on it, it says Swedish hello, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's, in, it's in my it's in my playlist of of Umbrella Academy songs, like because it was on Spotify, so it's in the playlist. There you go. You have to send it over. Don't forget. I do. I do. I do realize that because you're finished now, I can send. I can I send can, it to you. Yeah, you can. I'm going to be making a new one. Yes. The season three. I have. To, I'm going to have to pick a new character. My 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 two first two seasons are based on. So the first one was, you know, based around Klaus, and then the second one I ended up basing around Diego because because Diego in season two really does have my heart. Um, mostly because of that that dinner scene, that family dinner scene. Um, which is the picture I use for it. But now I have to figure out which person I'm going to put as my picture. I guess we'll see who who stands out to me. It may just end up being Klaus again. We'll find out. <laughs> but I have a feeling it might be Victor. Maybe. I've been reading the, the reviews I've been reading says that, that Elliot Page it really carries the sort of heart to this season, which I'm very excited about. Okay. But it was what was weird for me, and I don't think I texted this to you, is that I feel like this was marketed as you know his thing like he's the main <laughs> thing in it and then i i found it extremely weird that i feel like he's badly in it for most part like you know he's there but like there's always I think, more on the others <laughs> like i think because victor is 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 the linchpin character yeah. even if he's not in it as much mm. um uh because i mean the 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 original comic is called the white violin and it follows that yeah. relatively closely in terms of like story beats it's not like the exact same but like everything that happens to him over the course of that season is very similar the way that like the family treats him and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. and how well not the blowing up of the moon doesn't happen in uh i don't think the moon blows up in the comics but he does end the world like it, yeah. it, there is like a catastrophic like event um sort of thing um oh, i can't maybe they i think maybe they take him down before that actually yeah. It's been a while since I read it properly. Yeah. Um, I do remember the first time I watched that season, though. I literally, because I knew nothing about this, got to the last episode, and when the moon exploded, I like, fizz I like jumped out of my seat and was like, "They they blew up the moon! They, I, they blew up the moon!" <laughs> the fuck? It was it was a lot to be dealing with, and then I had to wait 
a full year and a half for the second season. I'm kind of glad that I, uh, I only was. Yeah, that, that, like, that, was, that was painful. We were yeah. all just like, Ugh. Like, you know, if, if, if I would have been on it, like, from the beginning, if that season one ending would have pissed me off so badly, I would have been like, ah! <laughs> Fuck you guys, you can't finish it like this. We lost, yeah, we lost our mate. And we were really worried about it as well, because it was like, it did well. It, like, it did really well, but it was still, because, you know, whatever, because, like, we were just like, oh, my God, you have to please renew it. We had, like, radio silence for months. Yeah. We were like, please just, I can't be dealing with this. Please renew the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they did, and we were like, phew. Yeah. What I remember is that uh, when it came out, I went to my first comic con after that. And it was literally the first cosplayers I saw were the Umbrella Academy. And I think I still have the picture somewhere because I took a picture of them. So there I'm are like, a lot yeah. of really great Klaus cosplays that I'm very, very fond of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Klaus is the greatest, just, you know. I and love all both, of my kids equally. And we both met him. So. We did. And he's great. We did. He's weird. We, <laughs> he's, uh, like, he's, in, very in very... <laughs> he's very sweet, but he's very old. <laughs> but I love it. I <laughs> <laughs> there you go, death. Be merciful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Robert. <laughs> well done. Uh, but yeah, that's. I, I, did I watch anything? Else? I I watched Lightyear, and uh, you know, oh, yeah. it's it's. I I found it incredibly fun and and good. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't hear my beloved Chris because, you know, it's Hungary. So I watched it with a Hungary. Yeah, you watched it in Hungary. Fair enough. Yeah, so I have to yeah, wait. You get to hear Taika. Yeah. You get to hear um, no, Kiki. anybody else. And Kiki, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, mm. like, you know, we are good at dubbing things. I already said this a million times, but like, I, I wanted to hear them. So I was like, I was a bit, I was a bit disappointed that, you know, it's my first time watching and it's not them, them. Uh, but the movie itself is, is, is great. And I love how it, it starts. Like, it's just it starts with can I? It's not a spoiler, basically. They already said it like everywhere on Twitter. It starts with that in in 1995, a kid named Andy uh, watched a movie. Uh, yeah, and, oh, no, yeah. I think that got mentioned in an interview. I, yeah. I watched. Yeah. And, and this is that movie, and I was like, I don't, I like that, <laughs> and it's great. Uh, it's like a proper sci-fi adventure. Like you know, I I was very thrilled with it so i will definitely be watching it again it's very good go and watch it the question of whether or not i will make like if if, if there will be the effort to go and see it in the cinema is is still up for debate to me um it's... but we already know that i you know toy story was a very big part of my childhood yes huge part of my childhood very very important to me um so I, I, it would be curious to see how much that kind of it feels, you know, leans into that, or if it's going to be quite separate from it. It's separate. Like okay. that, that, I, I will say this because it pissed me off like a lot. Uh, if you go on the IMDb page of Lightyear, it has like four point point three out of ten stars, and I was like, what the fuck is going on with people? And I start reading the reviews, and everyone's they're all being like review bombed. Yep. Yeah, and everyone is like, this is not Toy Story. And blah, blah, blah. It's. It's not like they literally said that it's about the character that they based Buzz Lightyear on. Like, it's it it's not supposed to be. <laughs> uh, well, you shouldn't supposed to feel like that. You're watching another Toy Story it's movie, very basically. <laughs> interesting though, because like they did that already once before. I don't know if you know about this. There was a movie called Buzz Lightyear Star Command. Yes. Uh, animated film, like yes. like sort of two D animated film, yeah, yeah, which yeah, yeah. Uh, I watched a lot as a kid as well, which is kind of the same it's not the same like plot i don't think but like it is it is based on the actual adventures of buzz lightyear mm. um i don't know just interesting no it's not the first time this has been done is what i'm saying yeah, yeah 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 obviously obviously but i i just don't get it like i i didn't go into the cinema and accept this, uh accept it to see like you know uh another toy story like i didn't i didn't want that vibe like I, I kind of enjoyed that it was different from it, like, you know. It was a TV show. It was definitely a movie. It was a TV show, I think. No, there was definitely a movie, because we had it on DVD. It was, like, straight to DVD. There it is, yeah. Buzz Lightyear, Star Command. Uh, oh, come on, Wikipedia, what are you like? 
I clicked on it and immediately the adventure begins. It was a two uh, two thousand animated direct to video film as well as a spin-off from the Toy Story franchise that released in 2000. Blah, blah, blah. The film later led to a television series. So this is the movie yeah. that came first. Yeah. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. That's a good movie. It's, it's a fun little movie, this one. would recommend, but you know, obviously. You got the other one. Doesn't matter. Anyway. Uh, but yeah. I don't think I watched anything else to be fair. Well, the umbrella like it. I mean, it just took <laughs> all my time. <laughs> it's two saw scene. Yeah, it's I saw episodes. the scene because uh, <laughs> I had apparently we started rewatch ages ago, and part of the way through episode two, I'd paused it, so I got to the scene where Klaus goes with five to go find out about the eye, yeah. and he just goes a bit manic, and it's like, that's my boy. I forgot that this is like. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Uh, but yeah. It's it's time. It's it is time, time to talk about Jurassic World. So yeah, I got Lily to watch the Umbrella Academy, and she was like, "You have to do this," yes. and I was like, "That's the first exchange," and I, I, I I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yes. So, what did you think? Well, okay, so I had to watch Fallen Kingdom before this because I hadn't seen it. Yes. And Fallen Kingdom wasn't good. Um. I'll put it that way. It's not a very good movie. I did express this to you. I think we, I think we, you know, agreed that the 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 part about it that that was like enjoyable was the visual aspect to it. Well, one part, but yes. I just think the, the just the plot. I didn't like the plot. I don't like the characters. There was nothing in it for me, really. I didn't think that the, considering it's a movie about dinosaurs, it really didn't seem to care that much about. The dinosaurs mm -hmm. that much um i thought that they rushed too much getting off the island which was the interesting part <laughs> to do all this sort of stuff in the house and i was like i don't care about any of these people child screamed and just cried the entire time very annoying i wasn't a fan of it, Put it that way but i thought this was a lot more better more fun I knew it's a lot more better. It's going well here today. <laughs> We're on point. It's, it's yeah. our brand. <laughs> I did. I, I enjoyed this a lot, a lot more. I don't think... so. I mean, these movies, they're not trying to be the best things in the world anyway. No. Um, they are popcorn films. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's no, there's no reason to, you know, diminish them because of that. Um, you know, it, it, there are things that are lackluster about, I think, all of them. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I, I enjoyed on a very base level. I was like, yeah, I was all right. Yeah. Um, I think this movie does get saved from the fact that you actually have these three in it. Like, it really, that's really big does. saving grace. It really <laughs> does. It's, it's just nice to kind of have them around. Yeah. Um, I think um, they underutilized um, Jeff Goldblum because the moment he was actually in it and making jokes, I was like, this is the best. Yeah. <laughs> we needed more was, of that. <laughs> like that, that humor is, I think, something that is missing from all of these movies. To be honest, yeah, yeah, I can agree. Because I, because I mean, these movies are meant to be fun, and it kind of takes. It, it, there's almost a sense of them being a little bit too serious, mm. and I think it was a sense of like, oh, we think Chris Pratt is the funny guy, so we're going to make him super serious in this and do, mm. do something different. And it's like, no, nah, you've just made him boring, though. They did. And everybody sad. does this. <laughs> everybody does it. It's not a real thing. <laughs> it would be a real thing if they use it correctly. Because, you know, in reality, if you raise You're your meant to make hand, yourself big. Yeah. <laughs> you are making yourself big to seem big. <laughs> the eye of the animal. It's not, not like... Even... It's just like, No. <laughs> The funniest part, though, like, I will have to say this, is when he tries to do it with two, like, you know, the Carnotaurus and then and, and then the um, Allosaurus as well. And, and he's like, and you're like, you're dead. <laughs> that funny. What are you doing? That's where you die. <laughs> then you just take your hands off and done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... I thought okay because I watched both movies back to back. 
I thought the the sort of strange whiplash that was suddenly had from like, oh, it's blue. Blue won't hurt me because I've changed blue. I've known her my whole life to the beginning of this movie where she's like, he's like, oh no, she'll definitely hurt you. She's yeah. going to eat you. And it's like, wait, what the fuck changed? Blue has a baby now. Is that it? I guess. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense to be fair. Like, I know. know, but like, there's no, there's no, you you cannot follow that logic within the film. Like it yeah. does not lead you there. Yeah, It yeah, just obviously. makes it seem like he's like, oh, I don't trust her anymore. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair. Like if they made it, they, they kind of insinuated that she'll take your hand off because you're getting close child i would have totally been on board with that but they, like that is not where they lead you it's just suddenly he turns up and he's like oh no i don't trust that anymore it's like fuck it was yeah it's it's look this movie like i you know how excited i was yes for this i made it obvious uh <laughs> I, <I'm... laughs> really yes <laughs> Nobody could tell. No, no one. Um, I'm a bit disappointed with it. I'm what not... disappointed you about it? Because I am curious, because I saw your ranking, and I was surprised that it was last. It is the last. I th- I think, funnily enough, that it's, it's a lot of truth uh, in, in the fact that this is the closest thing of what Michael Crichton, uh, the writer, imagined and and wanted to do because it was always about uh, genetics and uh, dinosaurs mixing together, like you know how you can create this world. Like uh, uh, that that was his main thing. I mean, he's the writer for Westworld, so you know he's he's he he was a very very smart man. Uh, he did a lot of research for his books and whatnot, um, and this was the closest to, I think, what he originally wanted like a big company like biosyn is not something that was newly invented it's actually in the book as well like it's okay. a it's a real company that michael created uh in that sense and uh and they real quick yes what is michael what was his name crichton right what is michael crichton's relationship to the entire franchise like where does he come into it um because i don't know anything at oh, all he wrote the uh, books okay so he wrote the books wrote but the books. like um, to the original um, trilogy, is he just like one of those people who came in and was like, oh, "I'm writing these properties for this this property," or is he like, has, does he have ties to the original? It, it's it's basically it's one of my favorite stories. It's it's basically he was friends with Steven Spielberg. Steven asked him like, you know, what are you working on? Like, what's going to be the next? And and you know, Michael was like, I you know, I can't tell you that just yet. And then Stephen just insisted that, like, you know, just, just please, just a little bit, just a little bit. And wait, hold on, Jurassic Park is based on the books. Yeah. Okay, that's yes. where I'm getting back. I mean, that's where yeah. I'm getting back. I didn't realize <laughs> that they were like right, that. Okay, that's fine. All right, I'm, 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 I'm now up to date with you. It is. It is. And then Michael please continue said the story. That it's it's uh, okay. I can only share that it's about DNA and dinosaurs. And Steven Spielberg said, "I want it." Like, you know, he saw the potential in it. Uh, uh, it had many versions before it became Jurassic Park. Uh, but uh, they they bought the rights to make it into the movie before it was written. So, like, Stephen trusted Michael Crichton that he's going to create something amazing. And he did. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's uh, it's fantastic. And you, sh- you guys should watch uh, uh, the movies that made us on, on Netflix. It, it it has a Jurassic Park episode and it's brilliant. Oh, okay, cool. It's it's just brilliant how they made it. And, you know, especially... I did, I did think you were going to be like, read the books. I'm like, well, I've got so many books to well, read. Yes. <laughs> honestly, read the books as well because they are so good i love the book so much i got four more books for my birthday lily i'm not getting to that anytime soon. no but still it's worth it like whatever you i i know what i'm getting you okay um, <laughs> check but, back here in six months guys yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway even though i feel like in spirit this is the closest thing what michael crichton would have created if if he would be still alive today uh I fucking hated the locusts. Like that yeah, that whole thing. Like you so basically what <laughs> I I Okay. So they built up this idea that the dinosaurs got loose on the mainland 
uh, and we're gonna live in Jurassic World, as Jeff Goldblum says at the end of Fallen Kingdom. And I was like, okay, fantastic. We're gonna have a movie based on the conflict between humanity and dinosaurs living together, and you know how we can uh, uh, do that, how we can coexist and whatnot. No, no, like. I feel like the dinos were basically just sidelined, like completely. Like we I don't. Mean, honestly, that's kind of how I felt in Fallen Kingdom, uh, where yeah. it was just they were just sort of there as like look dinosaurs. Anyway, yeah. Um... anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think what I am a bit tired of is that making, making the people into villains of the story if that makes sense like i don't want another big company i i didn't want like like i didn't it didn't make sense that they bring in bios in this late especially with this movie being the but, yeah closure of the I franchise like bios in could have been a really good like undercurrent like thread yeah throughout all three of them for yeah. them to become pop up at the end here and become like this like massive sort of like oh this is they're actually terrible sort of thing oh, yeah um like that could have been really interesting. The guy I did I did think the guy who played the boss actually I really enjoyed his performance. Mm -hmm. Because like that whole introduction scene when, you know, um um Ellie and, and um Alan. Alan, thank you. My friend was just saying Sam Neil. <laughs> Sam Neil. <laughs> Sam Neil. Um Ellie and, and Alan like turn up and he does like that whole like stammering speech and just yeah. sort of fucks off. I was like, all right, this is this is pretty good. I like that a lot. Um but the, I I thought that it became a bit cartoonish by the end of it, which was a bit disappointing because I thought, because it was just sort of like, he's just, he really is just sort of like, you know, cat, you know, yeah, stroking yeah, yeah, yeah. super villain. It's a bit yeah. like, oh, you, mean you could have like actually made like an interesting point on like capitalism, I guess. In, yeah. You know, the, which I think, you know, the original kind of was as well anyway. Like you could have really driven into that properly but, and they didn't, which was disappointing yes and also Maisie turning up you know sitting her down having Henry Wu um explain oh I've fucked up with these locusts I need your help mm. and, and I want to be able to study you here's all this information about your mother that you never knew stay here let me study you and I'll be able to fix this and then she just goes anyway I'm gonna fuck off now <laughs> and it's like it's like, really, it's like he's clearly telling the truth. He yeah. wants to fix a mistake, and you just sort of decided to leave. Yeah, yeah. Especially is right when he pops up at the end. He's like, he says the exact same thing, and she's like, "No, I believe him." I'm like, "What changed?" It's uh, it's so infuriating. Like <laughs> nothing changed. Nothing changed. <laughs> like you know, I was like, "Why?" Like it's. That and that what annoys me because this movie had so much potential, like you know, bringing back the original cast. I think honestly, they are the no best part of it for me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, no hate on the actress, uh, but Maisie. Oh no! I think they they gave her the most Just... stereotypical. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> Is she actually? Oh god, no! Yes. That might be mean. I was gonna ask if she was actually English because that accent was so. I don't, I don't think she is. It sounded fake to me, but like sometimes an English accent can act, it can just sound fake because it, they're in the company of a lot of Americans. Yeah. Especially when it's that pronounced. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I was like, yeah. I also just hate when teenage girls are like moody and like yeah. slamming things and like that whole like, oh, you won't let me leave. Like, yeah. I'm like, all right, fucking Christ, gang. Um. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so basically, I didn't need the locusts. I didn't need Maisie in there. Like, I wish this would have been just a pure, how do we survive living with dinosaurs? Like dinosaur thing, yeah. Yeah, and and that's it. Like, basically, we get a whole bunch of dinosaurs. I don't know how the fuck did we do that because. Obviously, uh, a few dinosaurs at the uh, end of Fallen Kid Kingdom were taken by the buyers and then uh, Maisie <laughs> let go of it. So, shh, don't think about it. Yeah, just, I know, I know. I, I just don't, I, I think too much about it. 
<laughs> I still very much enjoy the dino stuff. What I didn't enjoy is that basically you get a new dino. Like we get these amazing feather dinosaurs, which is like, you know, the basic theory that they were actually feather yeah, dinosaurs. Feathered. Uh, we get the pyroraptor, uh, the fucking awesome... Terizinosaurus? I don't know how to pronounce it. The, the, don't ask the, me. The, I don't know. Chloe. I'm not a. I am not a dinosaur person. Don't know yeah. shit about fuck. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, but the Chloe, you know, the big clothes uh, guy, fucking yeah. loved it. Like it's easily one of my favorite dinosaurs. I and... <laughs> did love that entire sequence of her like slowly edging herself down into the water to kind it's... of get away from it. I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's what I wanted. <laughs> That's what I wanted because we did a rewatch with our friend Anthony. Um, and we rewatched every day, we watch one Jurassic film. And I think, in sense of it all, I think the most underappreciated is Jurassic Park 3. And I think th the reason why I love that movie so much is because we don't have evil guys in there. It's just pure. Man versus beast. Yeah. Let's survive. Let's figure out how to survive and hopefully mm. find a kid it, along the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> it also kind of separates the idea of like villains versus antagonists because yeah. an antagonist doesn't necessarily have to be a bad guy. It just yeah. needs to be something that is opposing your protagonist. And if your protagonists are just people and your antagonists are just dinosaurs, it, it really is just the nature thing of man versus nature. Yeah. And it's like, there's no, what's the word, uh, motivation. There's no like intent behind like, you know, oh, I got to kill everybody sort of thing um and it's just sort of like this is what they're gonna do and this is what we have to do in order to make sure that we don't die <laughs> yeah basically you're right uh, that would be more interesting yeah i i think I, I i just got a bit tired of this whole troop of we are the evil company and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, i think what would be really made because like obviously i like I'm, I'm all for a thing taking down the idea of, you know massive companies and capitalism and yeah. great love that shit yeah I think it would have been way more interesting if you had that company and you'd had more of like an actual internal like company conflict where you haven't actually got a company that is genuinely trying to do a lot of good things. Yeah. Like all the things that they were saying, like these are all the things that actually could be really good with genetic research. Although anytime somebody starts talking about like rewriting DNA, I start getting a little bit like, you know, yeah. breath holdy about like, oh, but that means people could start like designing babies and like, you know, the, the, the you start getting into the conversation about like oh I, I can just make sure that my child never has any kind of di disabilities and then you're making out like anybody with disabilities is something that needs to be eradicated and that just makes that it's gross i hate that yeah and i think it um but these are like really interesting moral questions that you could you know discuss it with characters who have different viewpoints on these sorts of things but nobody seems to have actually got like a a, like an actual opinion <laughs> about the nature of like genetic um you know splicing or like creating something new all that sort of stuff like the original Jurassic Park was about like if this is what our power if we have the power to do this where, yeah. where, where do we stop it's like that exactly. god complex thing and exactly, it just yeah. doesn't go into that at all <laughs> nope nope and uh you know I I think uh the best part of it all is obviously the return of the big three, uh, which is Sam Neill, uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum, and Laura Dern. Like, come on, it's they were the best boys. Just honestly, I, I I had I had such a good the moment Jeff Goldblum finally turned up to like actually be with the gang, oh, yeah. and then just was immediately cracking a bunch of jokes. I was like, why weren't you here the whole time? <laughs> Exactly. I was terrified that he's gonna die uh, at, at that final ish scene uh, when he was dis distracting the Giganotosaurus. Uh, I was like, nope, no, no, I can't watch this. <laughs> Ian cannot die. <laughs> None of them can, to be fair. Also, they were like, oh, we've dedicated this whole area where the bias in, uh, in place as a, as a natural reserve. And I'm like, the place that just burned down? <laughs> the whole area that just burned? You've made that into a natural reserve. Yeah, that's like <laughs> that makes sense. That's fine. I, I, that the other problem I have is that ever since uh, Jurassic Park three, basically, there's no talk about the second island, which is Isla Sorna. Like, that's still there with dinos on it, 
and it would have made sense to relocate all the dinosaurs from Isla Nublar to Isla Sorna and then, you know, sort it. Or just do that now, <laughs> maybe, because we you're, never you're... find out like what what happened with the second island where right. two, two movies played out, basically, Jurassic Park, The Lost World, and then Jurassic Park 3. It just disappeared, I guess. Interesting. I don't know anything about that, so that might... <laughs> yeah. But it's it's basically it's just non-existent anymore, I guess. Mm. I have a couple other points. Yes. One, I very much liked her. Oh yes, she was great. She was I great. did find her motivation for deciding to help a bit weak, though. Yeah. It was a bit like ah, I saw her and I decided to do nothing, but it just changed my entire life trajectory in order to make sure that the child is okay. It was a bit like ah, could have done with more. Yeah. Could have done with like. Because, like, it's not like she's, she seems like she's in that much peril at the time. She's just walking towards a car. Yeah. And then they go, oh, don't worry about that. And she kind of goes, okay. Um, if she had had, like, if she had, I don't know, some kind of, like, oh, I didn't help somebody else before and I need to make sure I rectify that mistake. Or if, like, she was obviously being hurt and then she decided to turn away and that was eating, that would have made more. But it was just sort of like, all right, I guess, I guess she's just doing this now. I <laughs> I liked her a lot, though. She was very yeah, cool. She was great. I, the only other thing I had was, like, I so I forgot that he was apparently a Navy SEAL or a na- in the Navy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. just fucking forgot that because that whole sequence where they're trying to find the... the they, they go find um, the guy from the first movie who now works with the um, yes. French intelligence agency. Yeah. Um, and he's like, don't get involved. Here are some earpieces. Let me just that you be in on this like super secret French intelligence mission. It's like, this woman's not a spy. What's she doing in- involved in this? Why are they like actively making them a part of the team? What was that about? I, I have no answers. Because <laughs> so I was just sitting there like, what the, this is, this, why are they, why are they here? Look, she can outrun dinosaurs when it's Chris Pat is on a, on a motorcycle and she cannot. <laughs> <laughs> and they I mean, easily like, catch up on him but not on, like, but not on Claire <laughs> <laughs> who's on foot <laughs> and in heels and in heels not this time not they this fixed time that. they fixed that this time she I did think heels. to be honest her running in heels with that flare in her hand is one of her most interesting moments oh yeah 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 I love that scene <laughs> like you know I can run in heels if I want to so it just it was it was very cool I liked it a lot but like she's just I can't quite get on board with her place within the story. I don't know. It just, it like, also, they're not very good. No. I mean, they've obviously been, they've been created a very nurturing and loving environment, but they both suck at talking to their child. Yeah. Kind of both awful. Both of them. Good Lord. Yeah. Kind of awful in that. Just, but... She's just sort of like, don't go off to the bridge. And then gives up. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then he in five seconds into a conversation just starts yelling at her. I'm like, you guys just suck at this. Yeah, Have you ever spoken great. to a person before? <laughs> you're not get great parents, I must say. <laughs> uh... I don't know. I just thought, you know, what else would have been kind of interesting is yeah. if she had decided, Maisie here had yeah. actually decided to stay and help, and they're all like looking for her and terrified that she's hurt, but she's just there, like actually no don't take this down we're, go- we're doing something that's actually going to help things because everything's fucking falling apart because yeah. we've accidentally created a, like an ecological um disaster with all these gigantic locusts like i thought that would have been it but no she just leaves immediately yeah just like with no real motivation as to no. why no she just fucks off like okay. she's just like hey blue not blue beta you want to get out of here yeah and then just lets this dinosaur loose and <laughs> So, it's like it's so weird um i kind of wish because I, I i always felt like that if we have like a real human villain let's say like that that's dr henry Wu, because he's the one who's creating all these monsters like the uh in the raptor in the raptor is great i fucking love the in the raptor i will just put that out there <laughs> And the I just see it the thing, yeah. I, I, no, keep I, going. I love the Indoraptor. Uh the Indominus Rex and, and now the fucking locusts as well, which we love can... sticking the word in in front of things. Yeah. Um and and then just 
you know, and then he just changes and everyone accepts him. Like, okay, you're different like, now. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. That would have been way more interesting if he'd like, like suddenly been like, oh man, I've, I've become afraid of, of, of the things I have created. I've gone too far kind of thing. Yeah. Um, what was the reason for him creating the dinosaurs in the second one? I don't actually remember. I feel like it oh, wasn't the- as, as simple as just like, just military. I feel like he was like, there was another side to him creating that, that thing. I, I, I don't think so. I think it was just for- I thought he was, he, I thought he created it because he was asked to, but he, in doing, in the creation, he was like actually doing research on more of the genetic stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In order That's to do, you know, you know, the actual, you know, X, Y, and Z, but like the actual creation of the dinosaur to be a military, like, killing machine wasn't in his interest yeah, yeah. i don't know they, there was a through line there that could have been way more interesting yeah and that that's... is probably one of the things really you can say about all of these movies <laughs> uh, and that, and that's you know the, obviously the best one is jurassic park uh that's without question uh and and i i kind of like as much as i love the whole thing like i'm a dinosaur person and whatnot. I think what I dislike the most is that these things do have potential uh, to be f- freaking great, uh, uh, just like the first one was. And and I feel like each they time it. they just just drop it. Yeah. Just it it would be there. Like I love the concept of what do we do if we have to live with dinosaurs. Nope, we don't care anymore. Let's just create freaking giant lotus and just or whatever they are and just that's it. That's the plot of the movie and that's how Ellie and Ellen and, and Ian come back and I'm like really? Like the the dinosaur people are coming back because of locusts? Like <laughs> Yeah, you make a very strong point. Yeah, it is but it's a very good point. I um what was I gonna say? Back to Big Boss CEO man. Yes. I thought the other thing that was actually quite frustrating about him, and I feel like wasn't set up properly, was the fact that everybody was like, hey, you realize that he, 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 you know, he gets outright told by multiple scientists, like, this is going to actually destroy everybody because it's eating all our food. And he's like, I don't believe you. And it's like, this, this, you do not have enough basis to be this stupid. It's not even arrogant. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. Yeah. And I'm like, come on. You like, you got to build that up properly. If you're gonna make him so obtuse, you have to like. Sorry, I just realized it's completely clear. Um, <laughs> uh, you have to, you know, back it up with like story elements. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. Fun fact. I don't know if you know this. Do you know who that man was? Like he or he already appeared in the Jurassic franchise. Did he? Dodson. Yeah. No. Oh, you don't know. I don't know anything. Fun fact with Lily. <laughs> so Jurassic Park, the very first one, nineteen ninety three. Uh, yes. The scene where uh, Nedry gets the Barbasol can. He gets it from Louis Dodson. Okay, so I, I, I've only seen Jurassic Park once. I feel like I remember, I remember telling you this, and I was kind of, I kind of snoozed through parts of it because I watched it in a, in a film lesson um, in sixth form, and it was dark, uh, <laughs> and I was tired. Um, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I, I haven't hidden from you that this is not my franchise, and I don't. It's, it's like it's that thing of like this is not my nerdy thing, right? So I don't know, I don't know, I don't know things. It happens and almost at the very beginning of the okay. movie, of the first yeah. movie, and uh, it's it's when Nedry gets the you know you get this Nedry. amount of money and the barbell soul can and you can put the embryos in here and that's Louis Dodgson who's also in the book by the way like he is a character created by uh, Michael. Oh Kirsten. okay, so like he he actually like fully tracks the whole way. Interesting. Back, yeah. Well, that would have been more interesting if they'd gone into that properly. Yeah. Like, that's why, you know, when they showed that Barbasol can, uh, uh, as he... What is that? It's, um, <laughs> it's shaving cream. Oh, gotcha. Uh, 
that's what that the significance of okay yeah. i was like okay i guess this is important <laughs> yeah that was very important <laughs> uh especially because i uh, so telltale games uh just to sidetrack a bit uh they did the jurassic park game it was one of their first like interactive games uh, mm. it's very good i fucking love that game like i replayed it like three times the story is great it is exactly the story I wanted. Like, you know, the survival, the whatnot. There's not like evil people. Like, there is kind of, but never mind. Uh, but at the very beginning, uh, one of the main characters is sent there to find the Barbasol Ken. And, and that's her mission, basically, to, to get it back. And by the end of the game, you lose uh, the Barbasol Ken. It, it, I think it falls into the ocean or or maybe the T-Rex steps on it, something. But it's basically is destroyed. And back at the time, they said that it's canon. So it's like that story also matters uh, in the whole of Jurassic. It's not because otherwise it couldn't be with Lewis Dodgson in this movie. So. Yeah, I guess they, pro- they probably didn't consider that really yeah, no i don't think so i don't think they did uh but it was very fun to see that louise dies at the end the same way that nedry died in the first jurassic park <laughs> oh okay fun <laughs> it was like okay yes i i like that like yes it's the dilophosaurus dilophosaurus i i'm so bad with okay. <laughs> yes <laughs> this guy <laughs> uh so i i love this fun callbacks like obviously the hiding behind the uh, um, the truck is is a callback once again to the first Jurassic Park uh, uh, the whole scene where Ian is distracting the Giganotosaurus with the uh, uh, mm-hmm. that's that's a callback as well that's where we got terrified that he's gonna die so glad he didn't <laughs> and uh, you know I love these tiny bits and I found them way more interesting than the whole evil plot uh, let's find Maisie. <laughs> what was the name of the guy? Handsome black guy who was helping out everybody. Uh, R- Ramsey, I think it was Ramsey. Ramsey. He what was because he was very familiar, and I meant to look him up. We will um, look him up. That's that's the next step. Um, I liked him a lot. Yeah. I thought he was underutilized. He definitely um, was. Uh, I, I I but I very much enjoyed him, and I know I've seen him in other things before, and thought he was good. Um, he is oh I don't know how to say your name sir no. um, Mamu- <laughs> Mamudo Mamudo maybe Mamudo Athri I think uh, apologies if I have butchered Sorry. your name sir um, but you, what were you oh, in oh he's in Archive 81 oh that's yeah that's okay. the one yeah he was also in Unicorn Store yeah um, underwater as well I, yeah I've, I, I, he's just great I think he's yeah just, he, he, very handsome man. Okay. <laughs> they, very handsome man. Very handsome. They, they should have. They should have used him more. Like, yeah, and also because he was he was kind of meant to be this sort of. They clearly set him up as this like moral version, I yeah. guess, of of of, of Louis. Yeah. But um, but that wasn't played with any sort of real complexity. No. I did like that they played that whole scene where he he kind of comes in and he's like rambling at him, like, "Oh, we can start again. We can do yeah. all this sort of stuff." He just doesn't say anything. Which I did actually think was quite nice. Where he's just like, I don't even need to justify myself for no. you, that kind of thing. He's like, yeah. I'm not you, and just leaves. And I was like, that's quite nice. I did like that. Yeah, that was good. That was good. So yeah, but uh, you know, we know that this is the end of this storyline, basically, uh, because they are all about that. Like, this is the end of an era. Uh, but looking at the numbers. It's not the last time we're getting something Jurassic related. I kind of hope <laughs> that they leave it a little bit. Because I mean, I, it's just because I think we have a bit, like in general, like on the wider scale of things, yeah. we talked about this before, We had there's a lot of franchise fatigue at the moment, myself included, um, uh, in, you know, just everything that's coming out. Um, so it's I think it's nice to be able to put things on ice for a little bit and yeah. then kind of come back to them a little bit later. When maybe somebody's got actually something more interesting to say. I think what I well, uh, I do have an idea. I don't know if you have, but if you have an idea of what would you like to see, Jurassic related. I'd like to see something smaller and kind of just with these guys. 
maybe maybe like a, like a new ge- like have something that has like a new generation thing but like with personality <laughs> <laughs> <It'd be nice. laughs> like who actually maybe something that had a bit more with like with like um zia and um what's his face justice smith uh yes um names his name i can't remember no sorry, I'm sorry. but um those two were yes. very entertaining i would yes. like to see he had like a really whole interesting like because he was like programmer and then franklin. He was in the CIA. franklin thank you he's like programmer and now he's in cia and they're like breaking dinosaurs out of places yeah. and, and deciding to do cool shit and I'm like, they're cool. They Stick cool. down with these guys. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, that I mean, getting back the original tree is always like they the I just best. think anything and I see I think I find this a lot with stuff. They they kind of go, Oh, we want to make this big, so we make the plot bigger. Yeah. We make the, the, all this stuff bigger. It's like if you're going to making the focus smaller is always a better bet like like the stakes lower but with as much gravitas as you would give to something big that's the shit that's part of the it, you know i've mentioned this but it's part of why i think six of crows works better than the original shadow mm. and bone trilogy because yeah. shadow and bone's all about like saving the world but six of crows is about getting paid you yeah. know it's about yeah, it's about yeah, a bunch yeah. of kids breaking into a place just because they want to get some money um and it's like that's way more fun because <laughs> it's like you don't feel like you've got the whole weight of the world on top of you. Oh yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, oh, what, what what fun can we have with like a smaller story and like more character focus? I mean, I'm always more character focused stuff. Yeah. Do you have something in particular that you you yes. would want? Yes, I want a horror movie. Like a proper, like a proper, because it does have the potential. Oh to yeah, be like a fucking great horror film, like you know, like with the survival aspect, like you know, I, I, th- that's why I, I think that, uh, especially with Jurassic Park three, that could have been even more, like you know, just imagine, just let's grab, I don't know, four people, and let's have them stuck on an island full of dinosaurs. And... I think that's part of actually where I got I, I got annoyed with Fallen Kingdom as well because I feel like they were setting up for that and yeah. then they skid past it so quickly and they were like we're gonna go to this house now we're gonna this like Rafe Spall is playing a comically sort of strange bad guy who's just sort of I guess selling stuff but yeah. and, um, and it, that whole thing just did not I was like eh, I'm so like done <laughs> with yeah. like, all of this already because Franklin that's fucked off for half the movie and he was more interesting than most of them. Yeah. Because that's why I, I like the indirector scenes. Because that's that 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 shows mm. that it's there. It it could be there and it could yeah. work. I would have <laughs> way, liked those bits more, way more if I'd actually given a shit really for mo- more of the movie cuz yeah, like yeah, up yeah. to that point I was just they, they 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 I was done. I was like, "All right, I guess we're fucking doing this now." I don't really I'm I was really not invested at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If yeah. they'd done that stuff on the island after everybody else had fucking left, well, they've got the threat of the volcano about to explode on top of them. Oh, man. Yeah. Imagine how tense that would have so, been. So so much difference. What a difference would that make? And just uh... like, they, or they just, like, you know, these two and Zia and Franklin. Yeah. And they've got, like, I don't know, X amount of time until the volcano explodes, but they have to figure out how to get off the island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've got some people saying that they should figure out how to get some of the, uh, the more of the dinosaurs off the island, but, like, they don't have the capabilities to do that. Maybe they could figure... That would have been... I just... Wow, yeah. Look at me, I'm coming up with a way more interesting thing. There you go. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, like, I'm thinking of scenes like... the f- Which is my favourite scene ever. The kitchen scene. In, with, yeah. with, with Lex and Timmy. And the Velociraptors in the first movie, that's fucking awesome. Like, I want to see something like that. Like, you know, I, I, I want, like, proper horror. And and let's, well, I just bitched about they almost killed the end. But let's not be afraid of killing the main characters, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah, I, you know what? I think that's one of the, uh, the other part of this that feels a bit like a downfall is that the dinosaurs don't feel dangerous. No. No, nope. like there's there there is it doesn't really there does not feel like there are stakes. No, nope. really, in in them, which just Ab- is, is everyone sad. gets saved at the last minute. Uh, Claire gets saved. Uh, uh Ellen and uh, Ellie and Maisie get saved in no, the last. No, it's minute. hurt either. No, 
And it's like you can make peril by like you don't have to kill the characters, but you could get them like maybe an arm gets chopped off. I don't know. Like... Something, yeah. Because in the first Jurassic, Ian gets hurt, at least. Like in the book he dies, actually. Wow. <laughs> He's like <laughs> proper dead. And then he magically reappears in the Lost World. <laughs> Which is just fucking fantastic, in my opinion. So there are, like, mm, there. Uh, John Hammond dies a horrible death in the books. Uh, and uh, it was very funny because in Camp Cretaceous, they made fun of them. Like, I heard that there was a guy who was who got eaten by compies, which are the very tiny uh, uh, predators. Oh, it's like being eaten by piranhas. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a lot and of them and they're all jumping at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's John Hammond in the book. That's how he dies. <laughs> I think he breaks his leg and then the compies find him and then just slowly eat him. Uh, which is horrible, but like so entertaining <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Well, it just feels, yeah, I guess to wrap up a little bit, it feels like the movies missed the, the memo on like... Your, your characters need to have like stakes behind them in order to make things like tense yeah. and um, engaging. Yep. Um, instead of just being like, just throw a bunch of dinosaurs in there and I guess I'll do some stuff and they'll run yeah. away and it'll be fun. And it's like, no, we need like, you need motivation and like themes, yeah. like actual themes as opposed to just saying there are themes. Yep. This is why Black Sails is the superior show when it comes to themes. Because the whole thing is about narrative and it really loves playing into that. There we go. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's why it's the last on my top six. Understandable. Yeah. I'm a bit disappointed. I'm very disappointed. But I was very happy to see Sam Neill again because he's my favorite in Dr. Grant. It was it's quite delightful seeing the two. I do feel like they didn't give him a whole lot to do. Like, no. he felt they were, they made him a bit fumbly. And I'm like, isn't he meant to be like a really smart, like, that, that he's a me smart well. man? <laughs> I was so happy to see him. But he's, a, this, he's a doctor. Yeah, I, I felt like he was only there to finally make the Ellie and Ellen a thing. Like, you yeah, know. it's kind of like, what? Come on, guys. Yeah, let the man actually do what he's yeah. you know, good at. It was very funny about though, dinosaurs. that, that uh, he, he went for his hat, which is always very important. That was that was funny. <laughs> he, they did. I, I thought they made him look a lot. Uh, he's a very Indiana Jones vibe guy. Yeah, um. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's you know, it is what it is. You can't do anything about it <laughs> at this point. Uh, yeah, they, they did announce that uh, there's going to be an extended cut when it comes out. Um, on, extended on it's two and a half hours long I know. what are they gonna extend it with I, I, they cut out a lot like uh there's like concept arts of things that we didn't see didn't get to see and those look actually more interesting than the film we got <laughs> like there's like proper conflict there's i saw a concept art of, of like the t-rex getting into like a car park or something i i couldn't really make it out and and like you know actually seeing the dinosaurs between the humans <laughs> not just accidentally let them go like uh in, in malta it, or... it did really crack me up when i saw um uh uh that bit when they were like oh okay finally sound the evacuation and then you just see streams of scientists running and i was like have you guys never done the evacuation before you don't run <laughs> it's more dangerous to run you meant to walk swiftly yes they don't well, you might that. create a, like a mini stampede. <laughs> Bad, but to end on a positive note. Yes. Always down to watching Laura Dern with a gigantic yes. taser. Just that was great. Yeah. It was very cool. Yeah. She, she rules. It's yeah. Let's let's end positively. It's it's enjoyable. Like it's it is an enjoyable what, movie. Yeah. It is very enjoyable. I'm not. I'm not going to say it's not. I think I just had. Too big yeah, I, I see what you mean. You, like the, your expectations were it, so it, when it didn't hit them, it means it kind of goes down. Yeah. I think technically speaking, it is a better movie than Fallen Kingdom is. Personally speaking, um, I don't know if I am there. <laughs> you on then because I did, I, as I said, it. I I I do like Fallen Kingdom. I think it's because of the whole indoor after thing because that makes it so fun for me. Like you know, I I mm. love the darkness of it. I visuals are fucking great in that movie like beautiful. yeah it really was not a, i was i was so taken out by that point i was like okay yeah. <laughs> it has the saddest scene in any jurassic film 
when they leave the island and the brachiosaurus appears. Okay, that thing is sad. That is it's... sad. But like again, that happens too soon into the movie. Yeah, too soon. Too anyway. soon. Oh well. But Laura Dan fighting locusts with a taser. Always fun. <laughs> Sam Neil existing is just great. <laughs> And we love Jeff we, Goldblum. We love Jeff Goldblum. We, we all know that. Uh, but yeah, this this was us for this time around. And then uh, we will be back with the Umbrella Academy Season 3 review next week. And then we're going to have a tiny little break because I'm going on Comic Con again. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to be back again. Okay. Probably with Thor at that point, actually. Yeah, it's going to be Thor. Thor time. It's Hammer time. <laughs> Very exciting. I'm very, very excited about that. Yeah, me too. Can't wait. Christian Bale looks fucking awesome. I hope he's going to be a good villain. We need another good It's villain. just very funny to me that Christian Bale is in a like Marvel movie. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Christian Bale doesn't seem like the type. If you know he what I mean. Batman. Like... Yeah, but Batman... The Batman movies were created as like... Those were, were very serious. They were basically like gritty drama movies that happen to be about Batman. Yeah. They, they, you know, Marvel has a very specific flavour. Yeah. And you don't see Christian Bale in then. No, not really. I think he's going to be but awesome. I, get, if I, I mean, I'm not saying he won't be good because he's great. He's great. He's great. I love Christian I'm also Bale. Yes. just like Taika. Oh my god. Do we actually get to see Chris's full ass? <laughs> like you're making it out that <laughs> we do in the trailer because sure, sure I'm going to be kind of disappointed if we don't <laughs> <laughs> nobody gets to read into that in any way <laughs> I have to agree <laughs> I support this message it's like you've, 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 you've got it censored clearly for like <laughs> advertising purposes if we don't like, come on you need to see Chris's ass thank you <laughs> right <laughs> Well, I have to agree. It was like, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> it's there. Show it. First Marvel movie was full frontal nudity. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I mean, if the rumors are true and it's going to be his last movie, a store, well, come on. Why not? Honestly, Why not? I wouldn't be mad about that. I feel like he is, is, you know, perfect setup for that, you know. I'd be a bit sad. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'd be sad, but like, it, like it's earned. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but we see you all next time. Yes. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.